Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today, back to working on the horizontal boring mill. This is a Lucas Model 31, made back around 1918, and uh, been slowly doing some work to it, kind of getting it ready because I do have a job coming up that we need to use this on. Um, my next step in the process is uh, I want to get this table off of here for a little bit, and I also want to get these uh, lead screws that are down here out of the way couple of things I'm, I'm, I'm trying to accomplish here. First off, I really want to get down up underneath this bottom in here and get it cleaned up and painted so that it just looks nice. It's aesthetics, nothing more to it than that. But I also want to get this table off so that I can get in here with some of my straight edges and check these ways and just see how much wear is in them. Uh, I, I imagine there's probably a considerable amount of wear in them, but I'm trying to decide whether we need to, to do some, give them some attention get these things scraped a little bit and uh, improve them or whether it's good enough to go at least for right now. So uh, that's kind of my game plan is to get this thing off. What I have done already is I pretty much ran this table all the way down using the power feed to the end of the table and ran it off of the screw. Uh, there's a lead screw in here that moves this table in and out. We've ran it off of that screw. There's three um, <coughs> shafts in here the lead screw, and then there's also two other ones. These are basically power feeds. One of them is the power feed for the table, and the other one is the power feed for the tailstock, which raises up and down. So three independent uh, screws coming out of here. The lead screw, of course, is screwed into the table. That's what pulls this one in and out. The other ones are just uh, keyed, and they just slide on here, and they should just slide right off the end of the table uh, is with any any luck at all. That's kind of my game plan. So I've got the gantry positioned over this. Uh, what we're going to do is I've already pulled the clamps off of the bottom down here. I want to see if I can pick this thing up ever so slightly and then just kind of pull it the rest of the way out. We've already pulled it as far as the uh, lead screw will allow us and uh, see if we can get it off. So yeah, let's get in here and see what we can do. All right, we got our uh, chain hoist here. Got some straps on this thing and what I want to do is see if we can pick it up just a little bit. So I want to get it where it's kind of floating a little bit above the ways. Looks like we picked up a little bit on that side. You know what? Um, there's a gib on this side over here. Looks like there's one on both sides. I probably need to pull that gib out before we uh, pull it up. So let me set it back down and let's look and see what we can do to get that gib out of there. So here on the front edge, you can see right here is a gib and we've got an adjusting screw that allows you to tighten that and loosen it up by um, moving it in and out. So it looks like it's thicker on this end and thinner on the other, uh, which is gonna be typical of a gib. It's a wedge. So what I want to do is use my screw and see if I can pull it out. Yeah, it's coming. It's in there tight, but I can feel it coming out and loosening up. I just want to make sure I was going the right way there at first. Probably what will happen here is that I will unscrew this thing until uh, the screw comes out of the adjustment and then once that happens, it will kind of release this gib and hopefully we can pull it on out the rest of the way. This gib is tapered all the way through there. It's thicker on one than the other and it's, it's made as an adjustment for uh, tightening that up in there. A way for you to uh, basically take any wear out of the machine. All right, we should be free. What I'm gonna do is just get a punch and a hammer and just kind of drive that out a little bit more from the other side and uh, hopefully it'll come right on out. All right, here we go. That little screw piece should fall out. There we go. Didn't really want to drop that, but I think we're okay. So hopefully you can see that tapered gib. It's thicker on this end than the other. 
matches the a, a taper that's on the inside of this and by sliding this in and out it basically makes that gap wider or smaller and you can adjust it for wear and gib appears to be in decent shape so uh, that's good i have had to make these before it's always a challenge all right let's see if we can get this table off now so just looking at these three screws I was describing a while ago, so one of them is threaded. This is the one that powers the table back and forth. We've already, there's a nut, a bronze nut back here in the back, and that is already pretty much off of the, uh, the, the nut. So it's kind of, it's still hanging on to it, but it's still, it, it, it's not connected. These two rods, there's a, a, a block up underneath this that is mounted, and they both slide through that. And again, there's keyways in this, and it's just turning a shaft basically uh, that enables you to power something else. So I think one of these feeds the cross feed, and the other one I think just goes through it, and it goes to the tailstock that raises it up and down. So it's the power feeds for those. So right now, what I got to do is basically just slide everything, continue sliding everything off the back uh, while I kind of got it suspended here. It is suspended but these rods are still kind of up underneath the bottom. I need to just move it on back. So uh, let's see what we can do to get that done. All right, so I think my first try here is just gonna see if I can move my crane and pull on it and get it to come, but it doesn't seem to be moving any. Ugh. I'm gonna have to help it out but I got something we can do that with. So let me get set up for that. So what we got here is a, a port of power unit. So basically it's a little hydraulic ram that you get a kit. I've got one of these. I don't use it very often, but they come in really handy when you got to move something like this. So I got some things blocked up, got the extensions on here and we'll just take this and we're just going to basically push it down. We don't have this uh, threaded, uh, lead screw to pull that table off the rest of the way so uh, we're just going to give it some help here with the uh, porta power and it is sliding that table down so that's probably about an eight quarter of an inch per pump here so we're just going to bring it right on off you can see the rods coming out down here on the end of the table we'll just continue pushing it I think we've reached the end of our stroke here. I'm gonna to have to put some more blocking in here and uh, we'll take it another length till we get it off those rods. And here we go again. All right, the uh, lead screw just dropped out, so it's off of that one. That's good. The gantry's kind of just moving along with it here. Kind of straighten that up a little bit. Seems like it's moving a lot easier than it was. It's coming. I think I'm just going to keep using the hydraulics. We're getting it slowly but surely. Let me get some more blocking. That got it. The rods just fell down. So we are all the way off of it now, I believe. And 
get all this out of there. That should be just free hanging. And it is. All right. All right, we're gonna move this over here and put it on these uh, saw horses. Let's kind of get it out of the way to start with. Whoops. pretty good and I think we're going to just set it down right there all right glad to have that off and out of the way I'm gonna move this gantry crane kind of out of the way and then we can continue working over here so now what I want to do is get all three of these uh, rods out up here. I'm going to get them completely out of the machine. And it uh, looks like they're pinned in with tapered pins, although one of them has a bolt through it instead. Uh, the other ones look like tapered pins. So I've looked at this already. I'm pretty sure it needs to go out in that direction. So I've got a punch here, hammer. Let's see what happens. Yeah, there it goes. So there's a big tapered pin. I'm gonna get down here on the end of this thing. And, all right, that one came out easy. Let's see if we get as lucky on the other two. Let me get this out of the way. All right, looking at this pin, I think this is the small side. Um, I wanna turn it where I can drive it out probably in the same direction. So let me fire this machine up. And yeah. I'm just looking at those pins again. That's good right there. You know what too I need to do? Okay, these are already marked. So we've got two punch marks and two punch marks. We'll make sure I put the right one back on the right place here. So, take our punch, hammer. That one is being a little stubborn. Let me get a, a larger diameter punch. I'm gonna use a brass just so it doesn't mushroom that end. There it goes. There it goes. There's the taper pin. All right, let's see if we can get that one out. See this one here, like I said, someone has replaced the tapered pin with a bolt that goes through it, which isn't the proper setup, but we'll see if we can straighten that out when the time comes to put it back together. And I'm going to have to roll that one around a little bit to get it out. Let's uh, fire up our machine again. There we go. There we go. 
That has got all three of them out. That was not as bad as I was uh, anticipating. Very good. And that is exactly what I was after. I've got now where I can get in here and get this whole area cleaned up, repainted. Uh, and also I've got access to the, the box ways on the top here, the top of these ways that I can put a straight edge on them and start looking and evaluating this and seeing how much wear is in this machine so we can decide what we're going to do. Uh, ideally, I'm just going to leave it alone. But uh, reality is, is this is probably going to take some work. But uh, we'll, we'll evaluate that in a future video and uh, come up with a game plan on what we might do there. Well, there we go. One nice clean bed on this machine uh, that we can get in here and actually get some work done to this thing and get it moving along toward being back in operation. So up next is going to be some cleaning, degreasing, um, wire wheeling, getting all that cleaned up. Uh, we've got the top part up here where he wasn't able to get to and the head was all the way up top. Plus the head's got to be stripped down and prepped for painting. Once I get all that painted, I think cosmetically it'll be, I won't say restore, but at least looking pretty. And uh, then from there we can start really evaluating mechanically what needs to be done to this thing for a good restoration. Like I said before, my biggest uh, concern is how true are these ways down here to the machine. And uh, we're going to have to do a good bit of um, inspection work using some little tricks of the trade and machinery building to really measure what's going on and come up with a game plan on what we might need to do to fix it. My goal is, is to, you know, do some work to this machine and make it at least from a quality as far as the precision in it be as, as good as it was when it was new, which we should be able to do. So uh, that's my game plan. With that, guys, uh, that's a pretty quick video, but we are through with this uh, where we are now, and we'll bring you back for some more on this project as things progress. But uh, for now, it's going to be a wrap. As always, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, thumbs up, comments, greatly appreciated. Um, hit that bell icon, get notifications. Big, big thank you to all my Patreon supporters and other guys that help out financially on the site. Couldn't really do a lot of these things without you guys. And uh, with that... We will sign off and we will catch you on the next video. Again, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.